Hi, in this video we're going to take a few minutes to look at naming binary compounds. Now binary compounds are just compounds with two elements. So some of these compounds with only two elements, you already know how to name. I bet you know how to name all of those. Now there are really three different kinds of binary compounds that you need to be able to name. And so to understand those three different naming systems, let's take a look at this way of deciding which naming system to use. If your binary compound is ionic, you're going to use a naming system that either looks at cations, the positive ion from group 1 and 2, or you might find that you have to use a little bit different system for cations that are within the transition metals. Or you may have a compound that's simply covalent, and that uses a little bit different naming system. Let's take a look, first of all, at naming binary compounds. Remember, binary compounds have only two elements. Let's look at naming binary compounds that are ionic. And furthermore, let's look at ionic compounds where the cation is from group 1 or 2. So we're talking cations like sodium, or cations like calcium, uh, sodium plus one, calcium plus two. Those are the kind of cations we're looking at here. We would usually think of these as cations that form ionic compounds with only two elements. And because these cations have only one charge, it's very easy to give the name and know exactly what the formula is. So this, is, this works for cations from group 1, group 2, or actually it also works for aluminum, zinc, and silver. And we're always, of course, combining those with some kind of non-metal. So let's start here looking at this compound, Al. Cl3. We're simply going to write the name of the cation followed by the name of the anion, but we're going to change the, the ending of this from chlorine to chloride to indicate that it is a binary compound and that the chlorine has a picked up an electron and become a negative ion. So you'll notice here we have the name of the cation, aluminum, and the anion, and we've changed the ending to IDE. That's the system for naming this type of ionic compound. Here we have zinc chloride, We've simply named the cation, zinc, which only forms plus two ions. And we have named the anion, and we've put the ending IDE on the anion, zinc chloride. Once again, we've written the name of the cation, and we've written the name of the anion, changing the ending to IDE, sodium chloride. And for our final example, uh, from group 2, we have calcium for the cation. And the anion, once again, being chloride. Now, if we have a binary compound that's ionic and the cation comes from the transition metals, 
Well, that's going to be a little bit more complicated for us to determine the name of the compound. So here we see four ionic compounds that the cation is from the transition metals like iron or copper. And what you'll notice in these examples that are selected here is you have um, two different compounds with iron and chlorine. Now obviously they cannot have the same name. We have to figure out a naming system that will give us a different name for these two compounds with iron and chlorine. So what we need to know is the charge of the cation in both of these cases. Now right now I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail about how to find that charge. That's something you'll need to look at another video to do. However, uh, I'm just going to remind you quickly that since chloride has a charge of minus one, that means the total negative charge here for this first compound is negative three. And since these charges have to add to zero, the charge of the cation must be positive three so that these add to zero. So this cation must be plus three. So the name of this cation is iron 3 because its charge is 3 plus. How can I show you that without creating an earthquake? There we go. Because of this iron 3's charge of plus 3, we call this iron Roman numeral 3. So this is iron, Roman numeral three, chloride. We're just going to use the same rule for the anion, and this is just chloride. So the name of this first compound is iron three chloride. Now, of course, the name of the second compound cannot be iron three chloride, so we have to find the name of the second compound. So this time we see, since chloride is always negative 1, and there are two of them for a total charge of minus 2, to have a total charge of plus 2 in this compound so that the charges add to 0, this particular iron must have a charge of 2 plus. So the difference in the name of these two compounds is that the second compound is iron Roman numeral 2 because its charge is plus 2. One of the most common mistakes that students make is to think that this 3 has something to do with how many irons or how many chlorides are in the equation. When this 3 has everything to do with the charge of the cation, so that this iron is 3 plus, and this iron is 2 plus. That's what the Roman numerals are for. So in the next two cases, the thing that's different about these two compounds is that the cation in the first copper compound has a charge of plus one, and the cation in the second compound has a charge of plus two. And the anion in both cases is the chloride ion. So these are copper one chloride and copper two chloride. So, so far as we've been considering binary compounds, we've been looking at compounds where electrons were transferred. And we looked at those by saying, okay, we're looking at the metal. Is the metal from cation from group one or two? Or is it from uh, the transition metals where it's going to need a Roman numeral? Now let's say, what if we have a binary compound and it's covalent. It doesn't start with a metal. 
Naming these kind of binary compounds requires prefixes, and you're kind of familiar with this. So let's just take a quick look at this. In this first compound, we're looking at a compound with nitrogen and oxygen. And we're simply going to name the first element in the compound. And then in the second element of the compound, we're just going to change the ending to IDE. There we go. We have nitrogen oxide. Oh, but wait a minute. All of these compounds are nitrogen oxide. How do we tell them apart? Because when we look at the name, when we write the name, it has to be different than all the other kinds of nitrogen oxide. So let's look at this, and we're going to use a prefix for the number of nitrogens and a prefix for the number of oxides in our compound. So since there are two nitrogens, we're going to put di here for the di nitrogen. And since there's one oxygen, we're going to put an MON here for the oxide. So, oops, let's see if we can get that ah, in the right spot. Yeah, it'll stick in there. Okay. Di nitrogen monoxide. So as we're building names for these compounds, it really becomes quite easy. For the second compound, we don't really have to say mononitrogen monoxide. We just simply say nitrogen, nitrogen, and oxide. But we have one oxide, so that's nitrogen monoxide. And so that distinguishes this compound from any of the others on our list. So for the next compound on our list, we simply put the name of the first element. Here is our nitrogen. The name of the second element, but we need a prefix to go with that. So let's go nitrogen dioxide. There we go. That distinguishes it from everything else on our list. Uh, for the fourth chemical on our list, of course, we once again have the nitrogen and the oxide. But to tell how many nitrogens and how many oxides there are, we're going to have to use the prefix. So we end up looking here at dinitrogen trioxide. And for our fourth and final compound on the list, we're going to look at nitrogen. It has two nitrogens there, so that's going to be dinitrogen. And there are four oxygens, so that's going to be tetraoxide. So there we go, dinitrogen tetroxide. And we've named these five chemicals with unique names that allow us to go from the name back to the formula when we need to do so. So that's how we name compounds with only two elements. And I hope that helps. If you need to go back and look at the video, feel free to go back. I'll be glad to say the same thing over and over again.